Ladies and gentlemen, most of you will know him from television, from Hungry Beast, and more recently, he's now the barrel girl <laughs> on Can of Worms. Please welcome a great, great storyteller, Dan Illick. <laughs> Oh, hi everyone, how are you? Oh, good, yeah, good, excellent. Fantastic, that's really great. My name is Dan Illick and um, to give you a bit of a background, I'm a comedian, I'm a filmmaker and uh, I had a probably a bit of a different upbringing to many of you. My father is disabled, he's quadriplegic but he's a pretty incredible guy but it's safe to say he never taught me to play football, he never taught me to play cricket, he never really came to any of my concerts, uh, maybe one. Um, it's really safe to say that the laziest dads are the quadriplegic dads. <laughs> it really is. They're very lazy. They're really, very lazy. He wasn't spineless. No, he had one. He just crushed into several places. That's... Uh, oh, it's my dad. Whatever. <laughs> Get over yourselves. <laughs> now, the story's quite amazing. My dad was in the Army Reserves, and when he was 21, he was in an Army convoy in Lithgow on exercise, and the trucks were going down this bush track. One truck rolled, and the next truck came through and crushed everyone that fell out of that truck. My dad is the only remaining person from that accident that's still alive, which is amazing. But back then, when did that happen? 68. That was a long time ago, 1968. So uh, back then, he was rushed to hospital, and he was looked after by a lady called Gwen, and they struck up a wonderful friendship and then ended up getting married. And Gwen's my mum, and she still looks after... Oh, this is nice. Uh, Gwen is now my mum in this story. Hang on. Yeah. Gwen's my mum, and so mum, mum's been looking after dad for 40-something years now. It's, it's really incredible. And, and when I was growing up, I never really questioned how that worked. I have three brothers, which is amazing. I've got three awesome brothers. Uh, my oldest brother is a major in the army. We call him Major Fuckwit. Um, <laughs> My second oldest brother, he is a Qantas captain. He's a pilot. And my little brother, he used to work in intelligence. He was a spy. But he doesn't anymore. He's a physiotherapist. And I make dick jokes. So it's... I am by far the most successful brother out of them. So I've got three amazing brothers. And I, uh, growing up, I never really questioned kind of how we came about. Until it was revealed to me one day when I was about 20 years old, I was back from uni uh, studying at mum and dad's house and I was just doing some boring study and mum stormed in and she, would, she was just crying, just crying. And um, I was like, mum, what's wrong? She's like, do you have any idea to live your entire life without having sex? And at the time I was 20 and I was a virgin and I said, yes! I totally, I totally get where you're coming from! Of course, I didn't say that. Uh, but it's amazing. Like, you, you don't think about that. I, I never really think about my parents having sex. I never really think about it. I just thought, you know, they did it and we happened and that was how it happened. So I just thought everything was working down there, but apparently it wasn't. It was IVF. Quite amazing kind of story. And, and I was telling my brother this. My, uh, my second older brother, I was living in Melbourne. He came down to visit me and he took me out to dinner. And my eldest brother was considering getting a vasectomy. And I said... Don't you think, this is like some years later, about 10 years later, I said, do you think this is weird? This is like strange that, you know, he wants to get a vasectomy, but it took, you know, mum and dad so much effort for us to come about. And Mark was like, well, I don't know what you're talking about, just as he was drinking a beer. And I said, well, you know, mum and dad have never had sex. <laughs> beer went absolutely everywhere. This Italian restaurant, for a man who's meant to be a cool, calm and collected pilot, there was a lot of fucking what? Oh, fucking no! Oh, fuck! And I thought, that's really surprising. You know, you tell somebody their parents have never had sex, you'd think they'd be happy about that. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, growing up, you know, when you, when you got called a test tube, baby, uh, as an insult... Uh, it wasn't so much of an insult as more of factually correct. And, you know, it, it, if, if therefore my mum has never had sex, that means she's a virgin and me and my brothers are Jesus. <laughs> and it is a privilege for you to be here. <laughs> but what's extraordinary about this story is that my dad has done amazing things. He, he, he went 
that he'd learnt to walk again uh, a little bit. He, he can't walk anymore, but he, he kind of he could walk with a wall or, or someone helping him. He went to university, got his law degree, went and worked at ASIO, um, which is pretty cool, and then kind of uh, had, had this life as a lawyer. My dad's a really, really clever guy, very funny, very funny kind of guy. And my dad's always had a great sense of humour, really awesome sense of humour. And I <laughs> and I think, that I think this is where I get it from. Dad's really cheeky. He's really, really cheeky. My mum was taking my dad to uh, get disabled shoes from a disabled shop in Parramatta and she was pushing me into the disabled shop and the lady's not used to talking to people who are disabled and can talk as well and she was just looking at my mum and she was just like great and what's he want great and what's he doing good and what's he want uh huh yeah what kind oh yeah and they turned to my, my dad and went and what's your name and my dad just looked up and went Ugh! My dad's a lawyer. Okay. He can get rapists off if he wants to. <laughs> I also remember me and my brother were driving. We're learning to drive. And uh, we're driving to McDonald's, our family restaurant. And we, we had dad. It was me, my little brother. And my dad... Uh, <laughs> Okay, so growing up, right, Dad could drive a little bit. He could move his left leg. So we got the pedal put on the other side for a little bit. And uh, it was always exciting because you just never knew if you were going to survive. <laughs> <laughs> but he stopped driving after a while, so then he taught us to drive, which was very strange. Uh, so uh, we pulled into a disabled parking spot at, at McDonald's, and this self-righteous lady storms out of the McDonald's with her two kids. She's like, Oi, which one of you twos is disabled? And my dad just opens up the window. The quadriplegic in the front seat. <laughs> and the lady just went, okay. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I've been researching my family history. And I, I've, I, I asked dad today. This is a true story. I asked dad today because I'm trying to figure out Throughout my comedy, I do a lot of comedy that kind of blurs the lines of legal ambiguity. And I wanted to, I'm d doing Fringe Show, and this story, a lot of these stories will be in the Fringe Show, uh, but I wanted to kind of explore that. And I asked Dad, was there anybody in our family who's kind of a bit cheeky and, and kind of railed against society, blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, my, uh, his dad, uh, Deda, a guy, guy we call Deda in Serbian, oh, his name's Roddy Lab. He used to write... He got blacklisted by the communist government in Serbia for writing anti-communist poetry. <laughs> that was so cool! And then the whole family got shipped up to Germany to work in Berlin for the Nazis because they wanted a whole bunch of people to go and, and work in uh, factories and, and stuff, talent and c good creative people. And my grandfather was a cultural attaché for the Nazis. He used to write plays in Serbian to entertain the Serbian people that worked in Berlin. I was like, that's amazing. How come I've only found this out today? Anyway, I need to work jokes into that. I just found that out today. I'll just share that with you. <laughs> so he gets blacklisted for writing poetry, but also is a Nazi. So I think, you know, that's kind of interesting. But the, what's interesting is that my namesake, Danilo Illich, was responsible for assassinating Franz Ferdinand. So a little bit cheeky, you could say that. Prank gone too far. Yeah, uh, definitely. <laughs> definitely. But my mum is the reason why dad can have this amazing life. My mum is an absolutely incredible person. Like, she's given up a lot to look after dad. And the, my mum, I definitely didn't get my sense of humour from my mum at all. My mum cannot tell a joke to save her life. In fact, the very notion of a punchline gets her giggly. I'll come back to that. But my last name is Illich, right? I say Illich. The proper way to say it is Illich. But I don't identify as Serbian because, let's face it, the Serbs were the Nazis of the 90s. They had all the cleansing but none of the dress sense, really. Just awful, awful. If you're being oppressed with people with bum bags, you're in trouble. And so I, Karl Stefanovic, my name, Karl Stefanovic, on Today Show, his real name is Karl Stefanovic. But no Australian would ever say Stefanovic. That's just too woggy. And so I illick up my name. And so growing up with dad, there would be a lot of, mostly dad's jokes revolve around puns and jokes about Bosnians because dad is Serbian. And I remember coming home from the circus as a little kid with my brother. And he's like, oh, where have you two been? With a grin on his face, knowing where we'd been. We'd go, oh, dad, we've been to the circus. He'd say, oh, I tried to be a trapeze artist once, but I couldn't get the hang of it. Which is funny for two reasons, because <laughs> dad's quadriplegic, so just, just stuff like that, that would happen all the time. And today, today at breakfast, he said, oh, I had a brain scan once, found nothing, found nothing. <laughs>
Thank you. Yeah, great dad jokes. So my mum comes home from church. She's like, oh, our father Joseph told this wonderful joke at church today. Oh, how does it go? Uh, yes. Uh, so a man uh, buys, goes to church and he prays to God, please, can I win the lottery? Please, can I win the lottery? And he goes back and he comes back the next day and he says, oh, please, God, can I win the lottery? And then, yeah, then he goes up. And he doesn't win the lottery. <laughs> and then, and then um, he goes back to church. And um, I forgot the parts love. Oh, you didn't win the lottery because you didn't buy a ticket. And my dad goes, nah, he didn't win the lottery because he's Bosnian. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Really appreciate it.